Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kendra with Virgo's Alchemy, and um, this video is going to be all about making your pupils for your eyes. Um, this technique is kind of like um, a very basic technique that um, I have been using for many, many long years. Um, but it, I do a little, I do things a little bit differently for certain sizes. Um, the eye that I'm showing you right here, this is a small six millimeter total size eye with a three millimeter um, iris area. So um, this uh, eye, this eye was created using my new uh, six millimeter eye base uh, mold, and that will basically give you um, these nice little. I can pick it up. <laughs> These nice little um, uh, miniature ball joint doll style eye bases. Um, and if you are <clears throat> new to my channel and you haven't seen my other videos, I would highly suggest you watch my other videos um, regarding my silicone eye base molds. Um, I specialize in making smaller eyes, um, but as I have gotten um, more into ball joint doll eyes, I have kind of moved on to larger sizes, um, but <clears throat> I still love making a really highly detailed um, mini eye. And that's essentially what I'm going to show you how to do, but mainly I'm going to be focusing on the pupil. Um, I'll do another video uh, showing you how to do textures and stuff like that and different things like that. But right now, I've gotten a lot of questions about pupils and um, specifically. So I'm going to do this video uh, uh, showing you how to do that. Um, I am in the process of moving again, you guys, and um, we just bought a new house. So please forgive me. Um, my studio is a little bit of a shambles um, and uh, I, I haven't done a video in a while just because it's been kind of a process here lately <laughs> um, with this. It wasn't the best or easiest time in the world to buy a home, uh, but we managed to pull it off. So uh, I, I just, um, I'm a little bit unorganized at the moment, but I think we can get through this pretty good. Now, normally when I do um, tutorial videos, I will use a much larger scale eye, um, maybe something like this size here, only because it's harder to see in these smaller scales. This method that I'm going to show you on how to use uh, or how to do pupils can be used whether you're using or doing a big eye or if you're doing something much smaller. Um, this is a four millimeter eye base um, that I that you can uh, make using my four millimeter eye base mold. It's a total size is four millimeters with a three, or excuse me, a two millimeter um, iris. Oops, and I cannot hold it. This is one of the reasons why I try not to uh, do the small, small stuff on screen uh, just or on the camera because there it is. That's the right way uh, because I have a hard time holding things in front of the camera. And uh, like always, I apologize for the appearance of my fingers and my nails. I am definitely not a nail um, model or a hand model, so I <laughs> um, apologize for that. Um, one of the other things, too, I always point out with the smaller molds or the smaller eyes, you, I purposely have left the uh, texture on the sides. You can kind of see it if I, if I put it in the light a certain way. I'm so sorry I keep dropping it. See that, those micro lines. I did this for a couple of different reasons. Um, it does not affect the final look of your eye. These were made not really for ball joint dolls, even though you can create eyes using this mold for ball joint doll, doll eyes. Th th these were made um, for the art doll sculpture um, industry and, or community. Um, and basically I did this because when I was making eyes this small, I like to use a coating or a varnish over the top and to get it to, to go on these really small and nearly full round uh, shapes, um, those lines kind of help keep the resin or the coating or the varnish or whatever from pulling back and away from the edges. I don't know if that makes any sense or not, but once you coat the eye, those lines disappear. Um, and so I left it. Um, if you use polymer clay, those lines don't even show up um, hardly at all. And um, it's very easy to get rid of it. You just smooth them away with a little acetone. You can even sand them off. It, it's just, you know, or you can just coat the eye. It does has no 
final effect on what your eye looks like. Um, versus one of these. Now this is a, a mold that I actually purchased, I think off of Amazon. You can see it has a very smooth, si smooth sides and smooth textures. That's nice, but I, I personally like to sometimes draw veins because I think it's more realistic looking when I use my watercolor uh, pencil or um, uh, chalk pencil to do veins. And you can't do that on the slick surface. So um, it just really depends on what you're going for. Okay, so enough about all of that. <clears throat> all right, so I'm gonna demonstrate how I do um, the, I'm gonna demonstrate how I do the uh, pupil using the smaller eyes. If I go smaller than this, I, I'll try to do it on screen to show you the four millimeter, but it's just very, very hard to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with, um, and I'm not gonna explain this part of it because my other videos will do that. Um, and uh, it won't waste your time. So, First and foremost, I am going to get this part of it going here. Sorry, I'm just basically just squishing up some clay for my limbal ring area. What I'll do is I'll do a set of the six mil and then I'll do one of the fours just so that you can see that this can be done um, using any of those sizes. And um, again, I'm not really going to focus a whole lot on showing you how to do this part because this is already explained in great detail in my other videos. So right now I'm just getting everything set up. All right. Um, when you are doing this part, <clears throat> just always keep in mind that if you're going to use um, anything t embedded down into the center of the eye, which is the method that I'm going to be using for this particular um, video, you want to make sure that <clears throat> you get your clay so that it doesn't ex extrude, extrude out the sides. It's kind of important. Otherwise, you're just going to be fighting that and kind of a pain in the butt. Sorry. <laughs> I don't have the best uh, setup here. Here, you know what? Give me one second. Let me see if I can not lift this up a little bit because this is giving me a hard time. Let me pop it up a notch here so I'm not on the table. Yeah, that's a little bit better. <clears throat> okay. And again, with these eye bases... If you get clay or anything um, on the edges, you need to wipe it off. So we've got that. Now, let me get some white. I like to um, mix my clay so it's nice and Soft. I use Fimo soft usually, but you can <clears throat> you can do it uh, with pretty much uh, any clay. All right, so I'm just gonna make my tiny little balls here, my white. And basically, um, I'm just making the white palette part of the, the eye. It's a little bit more than I need right there. Hold on. 
Um, this white area will allow for your colors to stand out more. Um, I really think it's a, a very important step. You can also just use pure um, colored areas for the white or for the uh, iris area, but I like using white because then I can go in and color it however I want. And the white clay helps to pick up the colors and uh, makes a little bit nice of a, like a nice contrast. All right, here we go. Sorry about that. So again, push that down, give it a little twist. And that's how I do it. That's why I got the limbo ring and then my white on top. You don't have to do it the way that I do it. Um, I just, I, this is an easy, quick and easy way for me to do it. So that's why I like doing it this way. <clears throat> There's so many different ways to do this. Um, you really, you know, don't have to do it any certain way. Just as long as you're happy with the outcome, really, that's all that matters the end of the day it's your artwork not mine or anybody else's so however you want to do it now my molds do not have the um the limbo ring the edge around the side pre-made some of these um molds that you get from other sellers will have a limbo ring um edge or they call it a color ring going around mine do not um because I don't like feeling like I have to I don't know. I, I also don't like a manufactured looking eye. Um, I like things that look a little bit more organic in nature and that means that they're not always perfect. I think when you start looking at things that, that make them look completely, absolutely perfect and manufactured, you kind of lose a little bit of that life that you normally would get if you just did things um, by hand and on your own. Um, the molds these molds will allow you to, to cut through so much time and energy um, as it is. I think the that part should be left up to your own, um, you know, your own hands to create. All right, so here is what we're going to be working with with the six mil. And here is what we're going to be working with, with the four millimeter, with the two millimeter iris. Okay. So let's talk about pupils for a second here. Um, all right. So there's a lot of, there's so many different ways you can do this, you guys. With the smaller sizes, and I do make a mold that will let you also make three millimeter eyes with one and a half millimeter iris areas. Now we're talking micro. So, um... If you need to make eyes this small, you can still use this method or you can go completely and utterly just with resin. Uh, it's really up to you. Going with completely resin um, pupils can be a little tricky, especially if you want a realistic looking pupil. Um, in order to go all resin, what you would do, and I'm not gonna do this, uh, but I'm going to show you what you would do you would make a small indent in the center, in the dead center, with a with a tool. Uh, you can use pretty much any tool that you want. Um, I'm actually <laughs> looking for mine right now and I'm not seeing it, but even something like this, um, right in the center. And you wanna always go slightly smaller than what you want because your resin is gonna amplify whatever you put down on top. So you don't want this huge gaping hole because uh, it's just going to get bigger. And then you, when you're done, your eye is going to look like it's literally just nothing but a giant pupil. You're going to lose your color and everything. So um, that part of it is pretty important to, to get right. You want to make sure that you um, go a little smaller than what you normally would um, want your eye to look like. Um, and then you would just fill it with a... Um, a resin using, this is Patico brand, I believe. Yeah, this is Patico uh, colorant black. Shake it really, really well and use it with your UV resin of choice. Um, this works wonderful with UV um, uh, star drop, Patico, Patico uh, star drop. These two products are really, really 
to me, they're almost essential for making eyes. Um, you can get these two products off of a, a store at Etsy. I go through Snap Jewelry Shop, and you can actually use my code, um, Virgos Alchemy, to get 10% off all of your orders. It never expires. You can use it as many times as you want. I will put uh, the link in the description box below. So um, you can uh, definitely get this from Snap Jewelry. They're super lightning fast with shipping. Their prices are very reasonable. And um, it's, it's to me, it's like it's you have to have it if you want to do this. Um, when you're mixing your resin for doing pupils, you want to make sure that you do it uh, very carefully because if you put too much black colorant into your resin, it won't cure properly. Um, even if it looks gray and very transparent, don't let that fool you because once you put it down in a smaller area, it will darken up. Now, this, this method that I'm going to show you here is going to use a combination of both UV resin and uh, a microbead. Now, when you're choosing a microbead, you need to make sure that you're using something that is um, not going to lose the color, uh, something that's not gonna dissolve. Um, so I prefer glass beads that are not dyed, but are actual, the color of you know the black beads that um, you're not gonna have to worry about the color coming off of them. You can find these all over the place. Um, I also find that for really small pupils, the Recollections brand of uh, black glass microbeads work really, really well. I don't know if the glass itself is really black, but I've never had an issue with um, these microbeads um, ever having a problem with, uh, you know, having the coloring come off of them. So uh, you can try these. Um, here's another they go by all kinds of uh, names. It can be, uh, what do you call, um, caviar, nail art, microbeads. There's all different kinds. Um, and for the smaller eyes, you want to have something that is under a millimeter in size. So you want really super, super small, 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 small. And for larger eyes, you can get much larger microbeads in black. It just depends on what you're looking for. I don't always use microbeads. Sometimes I also use cabochons. Um, those are a little bit different, but they're like half balls and you just push those down just the same. Um, you can get those in all different kinds of colors. So if you wanna do like a really cool fantasy eye or something like that, you can use those as well. But for this, this is more for realistic eyes. More, I'm going for more realism than I am anything. Okay, so um, the next step, you can either start doing your texturing now or you can wait until the end um, of when you put your microbead in, you can do it then. So again, this is going to be completely and totally different um, for anybody who's doing it. Um, you can use all kinds of different ways and methods of, um, you know, putting in your uh Putting, putting in your design and your color. For the smaller eyes, I will suggest that you lay your color down first, then your bead. Um, and I also would suggest minimizing the amount of uh, drags or lines that you put into the smaller eyes because it can kind of tend to make them look, I don't know, cartoonish. Um, you just kind of lose a little bit of the realism. So... I'm going to show you how I do this for the smallest of the eyes first, and uh, we'll go from there. Now, with a blue limbal ring, I'm probably just going to stick with the same thing, kind of like shades of blue, things like that. Um, so let me go ahead and grab my pastels. I'm thinking maybe like a blue and like this light color here. Let's try these two here. Um, pan pastel. All right. So, and you can actually put a little bit more color in here. It just depends. 
So let me go ahead and put this video on pause for a second and let me get this set up. Okay, I'm sorry again about my fingernails. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> when you're applying pan pastels, it's important to make sure that your color is not to the point where it's going to um, make these big chunks when you lay it down. So always rub the pastel into your brush so that um, you don't have these big chunks of color coming off. This is the four millimeter eye. It's very hard for me to do this in front of the camera, but I'm gonna try to do my best. So I'm just gonna put a couple of little pops of blue in here. It does not take much, you guys, like very, very little. And it's always easier to do this when you have several eyes in front of you, if you're making sets. That way you can kind of try to mimic the overall um, look. And now I'm going to go in with that real pretty pink, uh, purplish color. And again, you don't need much. I'm going to put a little bit more in here. Give me one second. I'm going to load my brush. Here we go. And now I'm going to blow this. All right, so there we are there. That's pretty. Now, normally I would have put my design on first, but because this is such a small space, I usually put my color down first. Oops, there I go, dropping it again. Here, you know what I'll do? I'm going to attach it to my cork here. That way it'll be a little bit easier for me to hold. Just try to ignore the fact that it's surrounded by goo, gunk. <laughs> All right, there we go. That's better. Okay, so there's that. Now, <clears throat> um, what I'm going to do with the smaller eyes, and this is totally, again, up to you. Um, sometimes I like to put a pinch or a pop of um, some sort of iridescence. Um, in there to help the eye catch some color and light. Um, so I'm going to use a little tiny, tiny bit of this pretty uh, lavender perlax, violet, excuse me, duo violet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just do like that. You blow it off. And just the little bit that sticks on there is plenty. You don't want it to look too, you know, like crazy, but just a little bit is, um, is nice. Now, before you go any further, <laughs> this is really important if you don't want what I call floaters in your resin, and it's also a really important step before you put in your pupil. Uh, take your stylus again, this guy here, this time you want to go down on top and just push that powder in those colors. You can even give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a twist just so that those colors are married into your clay and you don't have to worry about them lifting up. Okay. That's really, that's a very important step. Next thing I usually do is I take a little bit of alcohol or even just good old fashioned water and I go around the edge and just do a quick little cleanup to make sure I don't have any um, clay or anything on the outside edges. So just clean up the edges. All right, so let's go for our pupil. I am going to go with um, these guys here. These are some of my smallest. What I do is I just will kind of uh, pour them into my hand here because even though they're super tiny, there's gonna be some that are gonna be smaller than others. And I am going for something pretty small for the size I. So, um, where did my eye go? Okay. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably going to pick See this guy back here? He's kind of tiny, this one right here. He might be a little too tiny. I'm gonna just see what it looks like. That's actually perfect. Um, I don't have my glasses on, so it's kind of hard to see. And this is so challenging to do this like this. The bigger eyes are hard too, but like these smaller eyes, you guys are really hard to do on camera. All right, so let me see if I can't figure out how to do it. You see where I have the a little tiny thing here. Hopefully I don't drop it. I'm gonna just um, pop it right down in the center like that. Wanna try to get it as close to the middle as possible. Sometimes I like mine to be a little offset. It kind of gives like a really neat little, um, I don't know, it just kind of gives the eye a little bit more character. What I like to do is I like to push this down. Um, to where it is half buried. And this is where, oop. <laughs> All right, it wanted to pop out on me. All right, let me go ahead and push this down uh, off camera because I really cannot see what I'm doing here. All right. Yeah, so if I put too much clay the sides of my clay would be coming up, but I'm gonna just show you where I'm at, okay? There we go. Now, this is up to you. Um, this is something I like to do, but if you do it wrong, it can actually make your eyes look weird, um, in my opinion anyway. So once you get it to that point there, what you can do is you can take a pin or a wire or the, the, the thinnest object that you can get that's rigid enough to hold shape and to actually um, penetrate the clay or pull through the clay, um, the better. Um, these larger pins tend to be a little on the thicker side, too thick for these tiny little eyes. For these smaller eyes, you really want a pin that is a really, really thin. Um, sometimes these guys work a little bit better um, for this. I have another tool um, that I that I actually use. Um, I, you know, you guys, I share a lot freely, but there are some things that I do tend to keep to myself, only just because uh, you know I I give a lot and. Um, um, I think that some things are okay to kind of keep to myself, <laughs> but, um, I'm going to show you it's, it's very easy to do this with a pen. All right. So what I do, let's see if I can't get a little closer. Um, this is going to be hard. So just find where your pupil is and do very light. Uh, presses to just kind of give that pupil a little bit more character. You see what I'm doing here? You can kind of see it. I know that this seems like it's tedious and like what could you possibly gain from all these little tiny little marks and stuff, but trust me when I tell you that it really does make quite a big, big difference when you're making your eye. Okay, it really does. Um, all right, give me a second. I'm going to go off camera and put a little bit more of these, um, marks in here. Okay. I added, um, more texture in here. Um, it started getting a little bit choppy looking. Um, so I stopped, but, um, what you can also do, you can also do some stippling with your, um, your brush to kind of, um, push those areas back down. Um, so they're not pillowed or you might like that pillowed look. Um, I think the more realistic um, eyes should look a little bit less um, pillowed um, where they have, you know, like those sandwichy, squishy, hard lines um, where you can kind of see that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this, but I just wanted to show that to you. Um, that's kind of like too much texture for a smaller eye, in my opinion, if you're going for a realistic look. 
So I'll come back and I'll show you the difference between what I think looks better and what this looks like now. Okay, so I've kind of um, altered it a little bit with um, some stippling and kind of just, you know, calm down some of those larger, um, you know, areas where the, the clay was just kind of too chunky, chunky, whatever you want to call it. So this is going to make a, a lot more of a realistic looking um, eye than what I had just a second ago. Um, I know it seems like when I do my little videos on Instagram and stuff, like I'm just doing these things so quickly, but um, trust me when I tell you that it takes quite a bit of time to, um, to get things just right so that, you know, I feel good about what I, what I put out. So, um, please don't think that just because you can't do it, like, you know, super fast means that like, you know, you're not able to do this because you can, it just takes a lot more. It just takes time. It takes a lot of time. Okay. So this is what I have so far. Again, this is a four millimeter, two millimeter iris. Um, and uh, now let me go ahead and move on to the next part. And this is where I would basically do my first layer of resin, which is usually a colored resin, but it doesn't have to be. It just, again, depends on what look you're going for. So I'm gonna put this down. And um, what I do is um, I use these little tins here to pre-make and tr to pre-mix my um, colored resin. If I can get that to, there we go. Um, so that's a silicone, uh, pupil mold that I bought like years ago somewhere. I don't even remember where I honestly got it, but you can find these pretty cheap. You don't necessarily even have to use something like this. It just depends on, on what it is that you're needing to, you know, accomplish. But the tin is nice because it keeps sunlight out and then I can pre-mix my resin and then, you know, I have my colors ready to go. Um, this is pretty much all Patico star drop resin and Patico um, colorants. Again, you can get these from Snap Jewelry Shop on uh, Etsy. Jazzy is a wonderful seller. She is fast, super fast with shipping. She is courteous. Um, she always has a great variety and stock of items. And sometimes Star Drop gets hard to find. Um, it sells out pretty fast. It's a really great resin. This resin here, it does behave in the oven. Normally when I do make, um, eyes that I know are going to be baked, I will use UV resin hard, which you can also use with these colorants. It's the Shao Shao DIY UV resin hard. You can get this from Judy's shop at um, oakartistemporium.com. Um, I went to her uh, several years back asking her if she would be kind enough to try to carry this because my tutorials always use Shao Shao DIY and it's very hard sometimes to find it especially in the English version of the label. So, um, you know, it was very nice of her to do that for us and I appreciate her greatly. This one here will hold up to heat. Patico Star Drop does too, but I just, I think, I just, because I have more experience and more um, um, results that I've done with the Star Drop, I, or excuse me, with the uh, UV Resin Hard, I can say in, in all honesty that it does really outperform many of the other UV resins when you apply them with heat. Um, so for my bases, once again, the white bases, I use nothing right now but um, Little Windows Brilliant Resin two-part epoxy. That is all I will use at this point. It is one of the only two-part epoxy resins that I have used um, that I can actually bake and it does not turn yellow or have a problem. Um, so if you're interested in getting her two-part epoxy, <clears throat> go to littlewindows.com. That's little-windows.com. Uh, and you can use my code there, Virgos15, for 15% off um, all purchases. And that also never will expire. Use it again and again and again as many times as you want. Okay, so back to this. Um, I normally go with a darker UV, um, uh, resin. UV resin uh, when I first do this layer because it will go into any of the little cracks and crannies and create veining, which is really kind of cool because, you know, that's kind of what you want. <laughs> you want to have um, small details that are going to show up uh, when you go to dome your eyes. So I am going to get a brush ready, which I'm doing off camera. Um, I use 91% alcohol. I know that sounds terrible, but when you're dealing with resins and stuff like that, unless you use a resin cleaner, 
it really is the only thing that actually gets it off. All right, so because this eye has like some lavenders and some blue and stuff like that in there, I think what I wanna do is I'm gonna go with a little bit of purple. I know that sounds crazy, but I think I'm gonna go for it. Um, and for this, you only need a very small amount Now, a lot of you are probably asking, wait, 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 aren't you supposed to be baking this first? You can if you want to. Yes, you absolutely can bake your eyes. Um, let me go ahead and just talk about this for a quick second. A lot of doll eye artists, ball joint doll um, eye artists, will not bake the clay. They leave it raw. I think it's a recipe for disaster, personally. Um, I think you're playing with fire because we all know that um, after a while, polymer clay will definitely um, eat through plastics. What is resin when it's cured? It's essentially a plastic. So to me, the two are not compatible if one of them is not properly cured. And um, so I always cure my eyes, but for the sake of time and everything else, I'm just gonna do it this way. Now, I will tell you, I have got eyes that I made like well over a year ago and I never baked the clay and they look fine. So it could very well be that it just doesn't matter. But, you know, if you wanna be safe, and if you wanna, you know, make sure that you're not gonna run into a problem, I would definitely go ahead and cure the clay. Even if it's, you know, lowest temperature, I mean, you're only talking about a small, tiny amount of clay here. So it's not like, you know, you need to bake it for like forever. Just a little quick trip in the oven should do the trick. All right, so for um, this, I am just going to um, tap it in there and kind of let the um, resin kind of get into some of those areas. You don't want it to really pull up. So what you wanna do is after you put a little bit of resin in the eye, next you wanna go back over it with a dryer, dryer brush, clean the brush. And now what you wanna do is you wanna kinda of spread that around and get it to go into those surrounding areas. If you aren't going to cure your clay, make sure that you at least are very careful not to disrupt your design. Oh, sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. So, there we go. This is so hard to do off on camera. All right, so give me a second here. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, sorry. <laughs> All right, so next what you wanna do is you want to cure that, okay? Make sure any um, exposed UV resin is covered up. Close your little tin so that you don't accidentally cure your, your resin. And um, for this, I'm gonna put this down here. Now, you can do this a couple of different ways. You can just let it sit. Sometimes I don't like to do that, but if you're gonna hold your, um, your eyes while you apply UV light, use a UV glove like this. Okay, these you can get these off Amazon. This will protect your hand from UV light. You really don't want that light on your skin. I use right now a very high powered UV beast for my flash cures. This is very powerful. Do not look directly into the light when you're using this. Um, Never ever do that, and you should actually use the. Um, you could you should actually use the glasses that it comes with because if you don't, you're gonna have a problem. Uh, <laughs> if you're looking into the light, you'll definitely have a problem eventually. Hold on one second. My camera is telling me I have low battery. and it does not take long to get this to cure with this light. I love this, I love my UV Beast, it's amazing. Um, this isn't a final cure, this is just a flash cure that gets the, the resin to do to hold in place while I do the rest of the eye. All right, now next you can put a little extra color in there. You can put a little brown, a little yellow, a little gold, whatever. Just use small, small amounts when it comes to the colored resin because you, you know, 
you don't want to lose your details. And I'll come back to the pupil in just a second. Okay, I put a little tiny, tiny, tiny little droplet of a little bit of orange just to kind of give it a little bit of something um, extra there. All right, so let's go back to the pupil. That's what mainly this uh, video is all about. So let's get back to, the, to that. Um, what I like to do is I like to enhance the pupil. If I were to just dome this just now, it wouldn't look bad, but I think it looks a lot better when you enhance the pupil a little bit. I do this with UV resin and black UV colorant. Um, and what I do is I make myself a mix of the black and the UV colorant and I kind of let it sit for quite a while so it thickens up. So um, it's kind of a, a thicker mix here. I don't know if you can see that without me pouring it out, but it's kind of like a thicker mix, um, which lets it kind of like beat up. So, what I do is I will um, place a small amount directly on top of the bead. This is very painstaking, so if you don't do it right, it'll pull out, it'll look bad. So you want it to, you want to be able to tap, put that little tiny bit onto that bead and then immediately cure it right away because if you don't, it'll, it'll slip down and it'll look goopy. All right, so I cannot actually do this on camera. I have to do it this way. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, there's a lot of things that are just impossible to do at this scale. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm already too slow. I was probably way too slow on that just now. You have to be super fast with this. You wanna basically catch it so it's a, a just a little tiny bead dropping. Um, if it goes, if it pulls out a little bit, that's okay. But you want it to stack. You want it to stack. You, you want it to have a little bit of a, a bump to it, um, if that makes any sense. Um, sometimes my brushes don't always work. Um, I have to go for something else, a different tool. And that's fine. You know, you'll find what works better for you. Sometimes I just need a different brush, something that's, you know, gonna hold that little tiny drip of resin a little bit better. You have to kind of, you know, uh, find what works best for you. And as soon as you put that little droplet down, you need to be ready to cure it. And you wanna cure it pretty fast, like I said. <laughs> So even if you have the light on when you're doing this, <laughs> and ready to go, like just keep the light on and just set it down. So that way you're not fiddling around with that. But that actually looks really nice. I'll show you what I'm talking about. You see how I was able to kind of get it to, that's what you want right there. I'm actually gonna leave it right there like that. It's perfect. I'm just gonna make sure it's cured pretty good. And this, again, this next step, you may or may not want to do it. Sometimes I will put flex in. If you're going to put fleck in, you want, especially with these little tiny eyes, this is very, very difficult to do. This is very, very difficult to do because um, if you don't have the right tool to do the dots um, or the fleck, um, you can get these big pulled up horrible messes. So just be very careful. With a color like that, I would probably do some flex with like this uh, dioxy, um, dioxine purple um, or even this uh, balto blue. So um, I'm gonna look at it closer and see. You can actually use both of if you want, but you just need a very, very small amount. So while that is done there, I'll show you. You can even use some brown if you wanted to, some brown fleck. But these these are realistic, kind of, but there are, you can also go fantasy with these, I think, or this one, I think. So I'll come back and I'll um, show you what I end up doing. Okay, I went with the um, dioxane uh, purple, and you can see I have a little, um, just one little pop right there on the side. That's, you know, you don't want to go overboard because if you do, um, it just looks kind of silly. 
Now, um, you could also add a different color in there, but I just chose to just put one little spot of uh, purple. Now you just want to make sure that that dries, and then the next step is to start the doming process. Okay, it is dry and uh, I am ready to dome. Now this eye is a four millimeter, two millimeter, um, uh, four millimeter total size, two millimeter iris, and it's using my um, near full round eye base mold. And again, you can see the textured lines there, but I'm gonna show you how to uh, finish the eye, okay? So none of that shows. A couple different options actually. Um, all right, so here we go. I'm going to um, see if I can't. I, my intention was to do this one and then also the six millimeters, but I think I'm just going to show you with the four millimeter because this is this is the size most of you guys are wanting to make is a smaller size. Three millimeters are just too small for me to try to do on camera. There's, I mean, I'm struggling severely with just this one, so. Uh, but it's the same thing you do with the with the smaller ones. All right, so what I'm gonna do, um, again, depending on what your intended purpose is, you can either use a Patico Star Drop or you can use UV Resin Hard. I already have the Patico out, so I'm just gonna stick with this one. What I like to do is I like to get a small amount of the product um, out and like just, uh, um, this is a glass surface, so I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit right here just to quickly do this. I like to put a little bit down this will eliminate air bubbles. If you try to squeeze your domes out using straight from the bottle, you're gonna end up with bubbles. It's a pain in the butt. So I suggest highly that you do it this way, let it set for a second. If you see bubbles in that, then it's gonna definitely transfer to your work. So you can even hit it with a quick uh, barbecue lighter very quickly. Do not try this with UV resin hard. Patico can handle it. For some reason, UV Resin Hard cannot. And I think it's because UV, UV Resin Hard is a adhesive. It's a glue. Um, that's my personal opinion. I think it's more of a glue, whereas this is more of a resin, and it can take the heat a little bit better. But even though when you do that, you have to do it very quickly, very safely. Safe, safe, safe. I am not responsible for anybody starting a fire. You have to sometimes just do things um, at uh, your own risk. Um, and you don't necessarily have to do that, but I do. All right, so next I'm gonna take my stylus again. Make sure the ball end of it is very clean. Even take some uh, alcohol and just really make sure you don't want any nasties involved in this process because sure it's all lints off and everything. Because anything you do now is gonna show up big time. All right, I'm just gonna stick my stylus down into here and I'm going to apply it. And hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. This is not the easiest to do. See, I'm already off a little bit center. Put a small amount down and kind of just let it get into the holes. What you don't want is it to spill over. So you can do a small um, application there. If you see it going over, you can also put it upside down. This will keep it from going off the edges. I suggest highly that if it goes off the edges, well, knees, it's not that big of a deal because you're going to be covering the entire eye with your resin. It's not that big of a deal, but you do want to try to keep most of that resin um, over the center of the iris. Um, then I look at it very close up, make sure I do not see any signs of any bubbles, especially near the center of the eye. And if I do not, um, I'm actually going to put a little tiny bit more resin on here. But if you don't see any uh, issues with air bubbles or anything, um, then I would have to say that you are clear to cure. And it looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and cure that with my UV Beast over here. Hopefully it doesn't, it's probably going to cure that <laughs> over here, but this is such a powerful light. It's a very, very powerful light. I love it. 
Love it, love it, love it. All right, so that should be good. I don't make the dome too high in case I want to go back. But do you see how nice that looks so far? It looks very nice, realistic. It's beautiful. All right, so um, now this next step, we're gonna address the edges or the sides. Many different ways to handle this. If you want, you can just lightly sand that down a little bit, but I leave it on there because I often will like a different color on that part of the eye. Um, you know, it just, it depends. Sometimes I want like a little bit more pink. Um, it depends on what you want to do, or you can just cover it with just plain UV resin. If you really want to make, sh make sure that um, you don't see those lines at all, um, you can also put a little bit of the white UV resin um, colorant in your UV. And this is my white. If you're using white, make sure you shake it really good. And this gives the eye a really glassy look, um, glossy, glassy look, more realistic to me than even just leaving it like this, smooth like that. It just, I don't know, it does something to it. So um, just use very small amount. You can actually get a, a, a opaque white too. I'm just gonna put a little bit down. And for this, I do use a brush, if I can find my brush. <laughs> I'm all over the place right now. Just make sure your brush is nice and clean so you don't transfer any colorant to this. Obviously, you, don't, you want it to be nice and white, or maybe you don't, maybe you want it to be colored, it's up to you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix, yeah, that light kind of partially cured this. So it's a little bit thick, but that's okay. And now what you want to do is you just want to go near the iris, but don't cover the iris and just go over. I don't think you guys can see, sorry. It's just not easy to do. <laughs> not at all. This is why I think some people are confused why they see the prices on some of these eyes, but it's just it just takes an awful lot, you guys, to do it just right. But if you find a freak like me who enjoys it, <laughs> Sometimes it's worth it because it is, it's a lot of work, but you can do it yourself. And that's, you know, that's the important thing to take from this. All right. Give me a second. Um, cause I cannot do this one. I have got to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I just like the way that this looks compared to, um, just a, just, this gives it something. I don't know how to explain it really. It just does something to it that I personally find appealing. It just looks more real. And I like it. But again, if you don't want to do this, you can just coat it regularly. You're going to want to coat it. Um, again, these eyes, even though these molds can be used to make ball joint doll eyes, um, they were actually originally intended to be used by oak art doll artists who make their own eyes for their sculptures. So really it's however you want to finish your eye. However you feel like you want to finish your eye. There's options and that's what matters. All right, so there I've got my sides done with the first coat. I'm gonna go ahead and pop it with my light. Clean my 
brush while I'm waiting. And this here is pretty much over. See this light, it's not even nowhere near. It's not even nowhere near. <laughs> and it's already, oh my gosh. I'm telling you, you, if you're working with UV resin, you want a UV re resin beast or UV beast light. You really, I mean, it's like the best of the best of the best. I cannot, I cannot get that off. <laughs> All right. Does not want to come off. All right. So, um, and this thing keeps telling me that I'm running out of uh, battery too. So, All right. Here we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the dome a little higher now that I've got the sides on. So I'm just going to go back, put a little bit more UV down. Sorry. <laughs> Grab a little bit more here. And I'm not going to do this on camera just because it's just It's just very difficult. Now, again, you make your domes as high as you want them to go. If you don't want them that high, then don't make them that high. If you want them higher, make them higher. What's important to remember is, is that the higher that you make your dome, the more depth your eyes will have, the more light they'll capture, but you don't want to get crazy either because then you start losing the realistic effect of them which is kind of like, um, I don't know. It just kind of ruins it. I'm gonna try to keep it from curing my resin over here. We're pretty much done, but as you can see, just one pair of eyes can take quite a while. Now, obviously I would be a lot faster. Well, maybe not a lot faster, but faster if I wasn't recording myself, but it takes about uh, a good 45 minutes or so to make a, a decent, you know, set of eyes. Now, um, I'm going to go over this again also with a little bit more just to kind of seal the whole thing together and make it a one just con con cohesive piece, marrying the sides and the dome. And if you're going to be using these in a project like an art project where you're going to be um, baking or whatever, you can actually do this part um, at the end so that you're not, um, you know, so that all your baking and heat exposure is done with and it's just kind of like final looks. So you can leave that part, this part up until the end. It's up to you, but... I would have to say that this eye turned out pretty good considering I'm trying to do it with very minimal ability to see what I'm doing. Um, I'm just kind of just making it look a little bit more complete, more finished. Um, and the only way to do that is with my magnifying glass and a steady hand. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and pop it with my light. And I will show you the finished eye in just a second. I would put this underneath my UV lamp, my regular UV lamp for a good four minutes, three, three to four minutes after even hitting it with this light, just to make sure that it's completely cured. Um, the last thing you want is to not have a completely cured eye and then try to put that into an oven or into your work, you'll just be very, very disappointed after. Um, so it's very, very important that you have a full, complete cure on any eyes that you make. Um, whether you make them for yourself or you make them for somebody else to use, it's just really, really good practice to make sure it's really nicely cured. Um, I, I will keep curing my eye until I can run my finger over the top of it and I feel no tackiness or anything. But there you go. Um, that is a gorgeous eye. Look at all the detail we were able to get with just a two millimeter space. You don't see the lines anymore. It is a complete cohesive eye. It looks glassine. It looks, it looks so pretty. Catches the light from a distance. Up close for photography. It looks brilliant. That's what I'm talking about, guys, right there.
<laughs> and um, it's not my best eye, but not bad for a demo. So I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, it's not the easiest thing to show people how to do these sorts of things, especially with such small scale. I want you to also see how this looks on the side. So you don't have that big bulbous looking ball. Sometimes I like that look, but if you're wanting to go for a more realistic eye, I think a flatter, but just slightly spherical shaped um, pupil looks the best. But I am a stickler for detail, and um, that's, uh, that's very important to me. All right, I hope that this, um, like I said, I hope it helps. Um, right now my Etsy shop is open. I will have to be closing it again, um, not in the two, uh, I will have to be closing it again soon just because we're gonna be moving. Um, but you can get the molds uh, from me on my Etsy shop um, and uh, uh, you just need to pay attention to the descriptions because some of my molds um, have a smoother edge, some of them are full around, some of them are flat back, um, and I do have um, additional molds coming soon. All right, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and give a thumbs up if you like, and I'll have more awesome videos coming soon. Bye.